Hi, I'm Catalina Dyson. And I'm Raina Hilden. And we're from the Sweet Next Chapter from Dublin High School, located in Denver, Colorado. We have around 20 members from 9th to 12th grade from various backgrounds, from musicians to athletes and people with lots of school spirit. Although we come from different backgrounds and we have different interests, we all came together with our shared love of STEM. Through each meeting, we bring in Dublin alumni and professionals in engineering fields who educate us about their careers and inspire our next generation of female innovators. We've collaborated with various individuals. Lee Nielsen, who has worked on the Lucy Space Project with Lockheed Martin, as well as Malika Ramaswamy from GE, who has sponsored a hands-on industrial engineering event. While many challenges have come with COVID-19, our club has replaced our classroom meetings with virtual ones and taken advantage of new opportunities through it. We even had the opportunity to have a video call with Dell alumni and NASA astronaut Matthew Dominic. While quarantine has halted in-person experiences, it's also provided a chance to utilize the internet and technology that we have to pursue our passion for STEM and keep exploring. Oil spill is defined as the contamination of seawater due to a spilling of oil caused by human error or occurring naturally. Oil spills occur for many reasons, such as when oil rigs are damaged or explode, when storage tanks leak, when pipelines break, or when ships carrying oil collide. Oil can also contaminate water naturally from oil seeps on the seafloor. Different types of oil spills are highly dangerous in their own ways. Oil floats on water, so wildlife may mistake the spill for a food source. Oils like crude oil have a thick consistency and can smother the fur and feathers of animals, preventing the regulation of their body temperatures and leading to hypothermia. These oils also can't evaporate, so they exist in the environment for a significant amount of time. Diesel and gasoline can evaporate unlike crude oil but are more toxic. Wildlife can absorb this oil through their skin or breathe in the fumes damaging organs. Humans are not exempt from these spills effects. Oil directly affects us because we can inhale the toxic fumes or eat contaminated seafood. Other less direct impacts include economic collapse in areas near oil spills, loss of commercial and recreational fishing sports, and loss of tourist destinations. Many oil spills have affected the environment since the fuel's popularization. For example, the Exxon Valdez spill covered 1,300 miles of Alaskan coast in 1991 and the Deepwater Horizon oil spill seriously damaged the coastline ecosystems of Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, and Florida in 2010. While oil spills are a pressing issue, rescue teams help animals impacted by oil, and many scientists are leading research to solve the issues related to them. The people that work to clean oil spills are environmental engineers. Environmental engineers protect people from the effects of the environment and they try to improve water and air quality. They detect contaminants, for example oil spills, and work to reduce or remove them. In this experiment, different materials are compared in order to see which one is most effective at cleaning up oil spills. The effectiveness of each material is rated on its ability to absorb and adsorb water and oil. These materials are called sorbents, or materials that absorb, adsorb, or both. Why don't oil and water mix? The answer lies in the polarity of the two different molecules. Water is a polar molecule. Different sides of a polar molecule have different electrical charges. Water's polarity allows individual water molecules to attract to one another. The negatively charged part of a polar molecule affects the positively charged parts of another polar molecule. Certain sorbents can be polar like water. Polar sorbents attract and absorb water. Oil, unlike water, is nonpolar. Nonpolar and polar molecules do not attract to one another, and that's why oil will not mix with water or dissolve in it. Other sorbents can be nonpolar like oil. They are attracted to oil and repel by water. For some sorbents, their charge does not affect their ability to absorb or adsorb. The physical structure of these sorbents can allow them to be hydrophilic and oleophilic, or both. Sorbents that are hydrophobic and oleophilic are the most effective at cleaning oil spills because they absorb a lot of oil and very little water. For this experiment, you will need the following materials. A liquid measuring cup, 
a pitcher of water, about a cup of vegetable oil, coffee filters to hold loose or messy sorbents, the sorbents that you would like to test, tape to make any temporary markings, and something to write with. Also be sure to have some paper or a notebook to write on, a good surface to work on, and a place to put your trash. In our club's trials of the experiment came with the following process and results. We tested paper towels, dog fur, cotton, corn husk, and feathers. We used the coffee filters to hold the dog fur, cotton, and paper towels like so. First, we poured one part oil into three parts water. In this case, one third cup of oil into one cup of water, but any similar ratio is just fine. The cotton, paper towels, and dog fur were each held in the measuring cup for 30 seconds, and the ratios changed as follows. Cotton was the least effective at cleaning up the oil, as it actually raised the oil in the ratio from 3 to 1 to 3 to 2, absorbing more water than oil. The paper towels had a similar effect, lowering the water to oil ratio from 3 to 1 to 2 to 1. However, the dog fur absorbed the oil, but not the water, raising the water amount in the ratio to 4 to 1. This made it the best sorbent. The corn husk and feather were each dipped into the measuring cup of water and oil, but did not effectively absorb much of either. The corn husk resisted both liquids fairly well, and the bird feather absorbed just a bit of oil while brushing off water. While these were our results and sorbents, get creative with your own at home, try out a number of materials, and stay curious about the world around you.